For investors looking to receive massive dividend income, QYLD and JEPI are both funds that are extremely popular. Both of these funds have a much larger than normal dividend yield, and many people believe that these funds are the key to financial freedom. So for this video, I have created an entire financial model in order to see if we can answer the extremely important question of which of these funds is the best for dividend investors. Using this spreadsheet, we will be able to project exactly how much we will be receiving in monthly dividend income from these funds, what the total amount of dividends we will receive over different time periods will be, and what the total value of our investments will be in the future. And looking at these metrics will allow us to come to some conclusions about both of these funds. If you'd like to be able to download any of the spreadsheets used in this video, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the analysis. Okay, so we are currently looking at my financial models for QYLD and for JEPI, and in order to perform these financial models, we need to make some assumptions about both of these funds. And anytime we want to make assumptions about funds like this, we need to look at their historical data. So what I have done for QYLD and for JEPI is I have pulled in all the historical price data and all the historical dividend data for these companies all the way back since their inception to April 20th of 2022. So if we scroll all the way down for QYLD, LD, we can see this fund started trading on December 12th of 2013 and at the time it was trading at $25.05 per share. If we scroll all the way up, we can now see as of April 20th, it was trading at $20.66. And let's go ahead and take a look at the dividend. At the beginning of this fund, we can see their first dividend payout was 0.257 and if we scroll up, we can see they're now paying out 0.205 in dividends. So based off of this data, we can make some assumptions about QYLD. We can see that their yearly growth rate is currently sitting at about negative 1.83% as their original price was 25.05 and their price as of April 20th was 20.66. Now when we look at their dividend, we can see their average yield over this time period was about 10.17%, but their dividend has been declining at a rate of about negative 2.11%, but they have had dividend yields as high as 26.85% during this same time period. We can see that they have had two months where they have had no dividend payouts, which is only 2% of the months since the fund's inception. Now, if we jump over and look at JEPI's historical data, we can see it's going to be a little bit different. Now, this fund has not existed for quite as long as QILD, which makes the assumptions a little bit more difficult. But if we scroll down here just a little bit, we can see this fund started trading on May 21st and at the time it was trading at a price of $50.03 on May 21st of 2020. Now let's scroll all the way back up to April 20th of 2022. We can see it's trading at a price per share of $62. Now during this time period we can see they have a yearly growth rate of about 7.98% as their original price was $50 and it's the recent price was $62. Now when we look at the dividend data for this company, we can see they have an average yield over this time period of about 8.22% and their dividend has grown at a rate of about 1.13% during the same time period and their dividend uh, their dividend yield has been as high as 11.79%. Now something that's really great about this company is they have had zero months where they have not paid out a dividend. So since the fund's inception, the dividend has been relatively safe. Now based off of these or based off of this data, we can jump back over to our QYLD financial model and our JEP financial model, and we can plug in some, some variables. So for QYLD, we're going to project a price growth rate of about negative 1.3% during this time period and a starting share price of about $21. For this first scenario, we're going to look at a one-time contribution of $100,000. That's going to be a lump sum. And we're going to have a growth rate for QYLD, a dividend growth rate, excuse me, of negative 1.8% and a starting payout per share of 20 cents per share, which gives it a dividend yield of about 11.43%. Now for JEPI, we're going to have a price growth rate of about 5%. We're going to have a starting share price of about $56 per share a one-time contribution of $100,000 and a growth rate of 1.25% and a starting payout per share of 0.4, which gives it a starting dividend yield of about 8.57%. So using this data, we're going to be able to project things like our monthly payout comparison, our total income comparison, and our total value comparison. So let's go ahead and start with QYLD and just look at the results over a 30 year period. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down and we can see I've projected this out over 30 years. We're going to be able to see what no dividend reinvesting and reinvesting our dividends is going to look out for each of these situations. So for our monthly payout comparison for QYLD, we can see without reinvesting dividends, 
Over this 30 year period with our $100,000 lump sum investment, we would be receiving $554 in monthly dividend payouts without reinvesting dividends. But when we do reinvest dividends, we see a massive dividend or excuse me, a massive difference. We'd be receiving $13,000 in monthly dividend income. Now the total income we would receive in dividends over the same time period without reinvesting dividends would be 264,000. But when we do reinvest dividends, it would be about 1.7 million. Now the value of QYLD over the same time period Without reinvesting dividends, we'd be looking at a value of about $67,000. So that's a decline from the $100,000 we started with. But when we do reinvest our dividends, we can see the value of this fund would be 1.6 million. Now let's go ahead and look at JEPI and look at the end of our 30 year period. So when we scroll down, we can see without reinvesting dividends, our monthly payout for JEPI would be about $1,039. But when we do reinvest dividends, it'd be sitting at about $4,832. Now for our total income pay comparison, our no dividend reinvestment would be about $312. But when we do reinvest dividends, our total income would be $883,000. Now the total value is where we're going to see a really large difference between these two funds. For JEPI without reinvesting dividends, we can see after 30 years, the total value would be about $446,000, which when we look at our contribution of $100,000, that's a pretty good appreciation. And when we do reinvest dividends, we can see the total value would be about $2,082,000. So this is all really great, but there's still a lot of different situations that we want to look at, and a lot of people don't have that 30-year time horizon. So we're going to look at a few different situations here. And in order to look at these different situations, for this financial model, I've created a few different visualizations that we are going to take advantage of. And the first thing we are going to look at is the monthly dividend payout comparison between these two funds. And we have a comparison where we're not reinvesting dividends and where we are reinvesting dividends. So obviously this financial model starts in the year 2023. And let's look at this without reinvesting dividend situation first. So QILD does have a massive dividend yield. So to start out, this is going to give it a monthly dividend payout of about $946, while JEPI is going to be paying out $716 per month. But because of QILD's um, decline in their dividend payout over different time periods and because of JEPI's increase in their dividend payouts, we can see there is going to be a point in time where JEPI is going to surpass QILD in their monthly dividend payouts when we're not reinvesting dividends. And for this scenario, we can see that that would have happened in about the year 2032. Now this um, analysis starts in the year 2023, so we can see that take about 9 or 10 years without reinvesting dividends for JEPI to surpass QILD in their monthly dividend payout comparisons. But just like we saw over the 30 year time period, at the end, QILD without reinvesting dividends would be sitting at about $1,039, $1 while QILD would be sitting at about $554. But we can see that that situation is completely different when we do reinvest our dividends. Because of QYLD's massive dividend payout, when we do reinvest dividends, QYLD surpasses uh, JEPI in every single month and it continues to increase in the amount that it pays out in dividends when we reinvest our dividends. JEPI, by the end of the 30 year period, is not even close when we reinvest dividends. They'd be paying out about $4,832 and QYLD would be paying out about $13,000, which is pretty insane. But let's go ahead and look at our total dividend income received analysis. And again, I do want to remind you that this is based off a $100,000 lump sum investment. So when we look at the total dividends received without reinvesting dividends, JEPI would surpass QYLD. It looks like around the time period of 2040, 2041 in this scenario, the total dividends income received over the 30 year period for JEPI would be about $312,000 while QILD would be about $264,000. But again, it would take about 16 or 17 years for JEPI to surpass QILD. When we look at our total dividends income received while reinvesting dividends, QILD has the advantage the entire time because of its massive dividend yield. After the 30 year period, QILD would have received, you would have received about $1.7 million, while with JEPI, you would have received about $883,000. But let's look at our total value comparison, and this is where we start to see a really large difference between the two funds. Without reinvesting dividends, we can see QILD's 
overall value is going to continue to decline every single year due to the way the fund is shaped, while JEPI is going to continue to increase in value. And after the 30 year period, JEPI would be at about 446,000, while QYLD would be at about $67,000. So you do have to take note of QYLD's declining um, stock price over this time period. Now, even when we do reinvest dividends, because of JEPI's um, increase in dividend payouts and increase in capital appreciation, we can see they do have an advantage over QILD the entire time over this 30 year time period. Invest, reinvesting dividends into QILD is gonna allow you to increase your total value pretty dramatically, but it's still not gonna be at the same rate of JEPI. But let's go ahead and jump back over to our back test. And what we can do is instead of looking at a lump sum scenario, we can switch lists to a monthly investment scenario. Let's say we're investing about $1,000 per month in both of these funds. So I'll make that update here on QYLD and we'll jump over to JEPI and make that update as well. So I'll plug in $1,000 in contribution and switch this to monthly. Now let's jump back over to our charts and see what the differences are. And the first one we'll look at again is our monthly payout comparison. We can see not too much of a difference between the same conclusions really still apply for both of these funds. Let's look at our total dividends received comparison. Again, it's gonna be pretty similar to our lump sum scenario. And let's look at our total value comparison. And again, it's gonna be somewhat similar once again. But what kind of conclusions can we come to based off of this analysis that we have just performed. And if you're familiar with financial planning, you'll know that the conclusions that we come to will depend greatly on things like what your investment goals are and what your investment time horizon is. But I'll go ahead and make a few key points. And the first thing we'll go over and look at is our monthly payout comparison. So it is important to remember that the goal for many people using these funds is to retire and live off of their dividend income. So what we're gonna do is we're actually not gonna look at our dividend reinvestment scenario here. We're gonna look at without reinvesting dividends since people are wanting to live off of their dividend income. So if you have a much shorter time frame, let's say you're older, closer to your 60s, 65, then QYLD is probably a better option for you due to its massive dividend yield. Now let's actually go back over to our back testing model and switch this back to a lump sum since we're looking at a retirement scenario and plug back in 100,000 for each of these funds. And we'll jump back over to QYLD and do the same. We'll switch this to lump sum and plug in 100,000. If we jump back over to our monthly payout, this is gonna give us a better visualization for why QYLD might be better for people with a short term um, time horizon for their investments because we can see it would take about um, 10 years, 10 to 11 to nine years for JEPI to outperform QYLD when it, you're looking at your monthly dividend payout comparison without reinvesting dividends. Now, if you're someone who's younger, who's still looking to retire off of dividends, it might be a mix between the two that you're looking to invest in because you want to have um, some dividends to live off of, but you also want to see some price appreciation with your dividend income. So JEPI and QYLD might have a place in both of this, those scenarios. Now, remember to look over at our total value comparison also if you're someone who's younger looking to retire off of dividends because you're going to give up a whole lot of value if you're not reinvesting dividends and you're only investing into QYLD because of its dec declining stock price. So even if you're living off of the dividends with JEPI, we can see that the stock price is still going to appreciate over time instead of QYLD where it would depreciate. So those are just a couple of high level thoughts about QYLD versus JEPI. Obviously all the in-depth analysis we need is really right in front of front of us when we look at these charts and these different scenarios and situations. And remember, all of this is based off of the variables that we plug in. So if you have further questions about JEPI or QYLD or really any dividend growth stock in general, then I'd suggest you go to my Patreon page and download this spreadsheet and work with it. And you can see how different scenar scenarios and situations would play out. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Go ahead and let me know what your thoughts are on both of these funds down below. Let me know if you agree or disagree and why. So thank you so much for watching this video and please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.